What does the panel think the solution is to the shockingly low admission rates that Durham University has for students from state schools? This comes from figures released early this month by the Higher Education Statistics Agency that said whilst the admission of students from state schools had increased, Durham's 60% admission rate is much lower than the national average of 90%. Joe, what is your reaction to this? Um, I think Durham University needs to do kind of two main things. I think, first of all, it's clearly got an image problem when it comes to working class students. I think the Trebs rugby club fiasco we saw last term is a perfect example of that. Um, I think, more generally, the university needs to go further in actively recruiting from state schools, going to state schools, speaking to students, telling them that Durham is an attractive option. Um, and also, um, a, bring back the grants that Durham itself has scrapped and B, make up for the grants and the low level of maintenance, uh, the grant cuts and the low level of maintenance the government provides. Um, because while we are seeing more students entering university, more and more working class students are not finishing university because they simply do not have enough money to get by. So if Durham genuinely wants to recruit more students from state schools, it should offer far more generous maintenance loans and grants to those students. Ben, would you agree with this? I don't know about control, but I went to a state comprehensive. I went to a northern state comprehensive. My dad's a mechanic, and I'm from a family of farmers, so I'm, I'm happily on the right side of this argument, I think. I'm, I'm as common as they come. But the, the, stats, <laughs> the stats do speak for themselves. 63% of Durham students went to state schools compared to 90% of the UK average. So the next question is, is it a problem? And I'm yet to be convinced that having, you know, me... I'm here, but having posh, privately educated peers, does that bother me? I'm not sure it affects my education in any way at all. I can't see, I can't see a plausible solution to the problem. But the point is that you are here. You know, we're not talking about the people who are here. We're talking about the people who haven't had the opportunity to be here. And I think the point is that the university is missing out on talented students, and the university wants to recruit the most talented people. People from state schools perform better than people at private schools with the same grades at university. That's a fact. It's from a study of 132,000 UK students taken over 10 years. These are, you know, state school students who get an A star are more likely to get a first at the end of their degree than private school students who do. Um, it's between one and two grades. A specific example is that for a male state school student who gets BBB, comes out with the same average degree as a private school student who got an A. So when people talk about grade reductions being unfair or being a leg up, they're not. They're just a more accurate measure of aptitude. Uni um, places aren't offered based on your achievement. You think they are, but actually, they're offered based on your aptitude and your ability to do well in that place. If grades aren't, and if grades should be standardised slightly, I think that the uni should take advantage to do that, because currently it's missing out on a really talented pool of students. Like, I mean... I personally was very lucky I went to a grammar school. I also think part of this is that Durham and other elite universities boost their percentage of state school students because like, I know a lot of people at Durham who went to a grammar school. There are not that many grammar schools in this country. Do, um, do you think it's a, an asp aspirational problem of state schools because o Oxford and Cambridge are, all, are below Durham as well? Do you think it's a problem of teachers not encouraging their students to apply to the top universities? Or do you think the, those universities need to do more outreach programmes? I think that's a problem, but I think it's the unis who are missing out on talented students, and so they should do outreach, and they do do outreach at some schools. I got outreach from Durham at my school, a recruiter came and spoke in a sixth form assembly, yeah. because they like grammar school students. And there are chav do well chav chav have an outreach programme where they're going into um, local North East schools and um, getting sixth formers to come in and experience the college life. And I think that is an important part of breaking down this stereotype that Durham has, which really is very off-putting to lots of, you know, state school pupils. Hugo, do you think this is a problem? Uh, it depends how we look at it. Uh, first of all, let me emphasize how important blind recruiting is. So if we can't rely on remarks in this country, which I, I don't know what, uh, what, uh, what the situation is, but it seems to imply as if uh, people in, in private schools, as opposed to people in state-funded schools, get different grades for the same work. Uh, that is not that simply won't do. Uh, no, I think there's they have advantages while doing the work, basically. Well, but it doesn't matter, it's if just that the grades reflect different outcomes when at university. That, that's true, but we need to, I think we should measure on merit, maybe the system as, as, uh, as uniform as possible, so that a grade means 
what it means. If but the system think, isn't uniform if someone's gone to a state school which costs the state six thousand pounds a year to fund, and if someone else has gone to Eton which costs God knows how much. So it's not. Doesn't cost the state. Money, does it? Still, I think there's a much more important problem that no one I think touched upon, and that is colleges are absurdly expensive. I mean, absurdly expensive. It is next. It's nearly twice cheaper to live out of college. I knew people who missed out on the college experience because it is simply not affordable to go into college for the first year. It seems to be the most uh, the most posh thing you can possibly do. This is the three universities that we have talked about: uh, Oxford, Cambridge, Dartmouth. Do you know there's a pattern there? Those are all college universities. There's not that many out there. I think that's a key issue. Uh, I, I'm not from the UK. When I applied to Durham, it was only because it was high in the rankings. I, I never knew about Durham, even. Uh, but I also do think it's, it's the college experience that is uh, both a plus and a minus. Uh, it's an anchor that, that stops, perhaps, uh, students from different uh, backgrounds to uh, apply and flourish. Would anybody want to come in on this question at all? Yeah, you sir. Uh, yeah, I, I think there's a sort of uh, something we can do upstream as well, which is I don't know how how I feel about this, but I know from my experience, I went to a private school that's been uh, name checked already. Um, that these schools <laughs> have more Me money too. than God and could do so much more to invest that money in helping state educated people from the area around them in uh, in, in getting into university, get, in getting them, giving them the confidence to do so. So I wonder what the panel feel about the idea that private schools should be mandated by the government to do to spend more of their money in uh, assisting state education. Ben, any thoughts? Well, at the moment, private schools get char- charitable tax status, and I'd be happy to see them do something to earn that tax status rather than just being gifted as they do at the moment. Uh, <laughs> Well, the Labour manifesto promised to remove that uh, sort of charitable status and claim that money back, which they could then invest in. <coughs> so, so. 